everybody, welcome to Ocalo Garage. My name is Thomas. Today is a good day. I got another package from Factory 5 and I got my upper control arms. So I think that is the only thing I was missing to be able to finish everything for the front suspension. But that is not the point of today's video. Today's video is kind of a confession. I went ahead and installed the fuel tank off camera. I was like, you know, it's like four bolts. Why should I put that on camera? And I probably should have because there's a handful of lessons learned. So stand by and I'm gonna talk you through a couple of things I learned installing my fuel tank in the Daytona Coupe. So here we go. First thing, this little ring dude that goes on uh, the, the fuel filler, there's a hole already in the tank uh, to secure it. And I think that's fine, but the problem is you can't put this on with the tank mounted and installed, which is what they suggest. So I had to put this on first, which means the filler tube had to be in. Um, I'm still not entirely sure this is correct because I think this should be farther back. So I may have to revisit this and maybe we don't use this hole. But, because you can see there's, there is space down here where if this were farther back, there should be a hole and you can mount it. But if you're using this hole that already exists in the tank, you can't mount that with the tank installed. So I may have to take this tank back out and move this because you see it sticks out a little bit. So I think I did that wrong. If anybody knows for sure, I mean that really does look wrong because this should be kind of back there I think. Um, so either way it's a tight fit and I was just a little afraid to drill through the tank here because like the weld seams it's difficult to see but the the weld seams are here and I'm afraid if I drilled through that it might not be a good seal in the tank. So there's that so I've got to check on that. Um, so that was a little bit interesting to kind of feed this through the frame here, um, but it wasn't too difficult. And I did this tank by myself, so it's not super difficult in that regard. Um, I had to drill out the the straps. I had to drill out the hole here to clear, make clearance for this bolt to fit through on both of them. The other thing is these are pre-bent, but they're not pre-bent well. So the first thing I did without the tank in is I mounted it here and I mounted it back underneath, which I'll show you in a second just to make sure I could get get the bolts in and I tightened it down um, but it still wasn't quite angled right and I apologize if you can't really see but they do fit in there well now um, so but just getting these this bolt into this strap was a pain in the ass uh, so wasn't easy. It did require extra bending of these straps, trying to get them to bend the right way around the tank and fit snugly. But you can do it, and you can do it by yourself. The other thing is there are some parts on the tank that are bent up when you get it. You do need to flatten those down because otherwise it won't fit underneath this rail here and then the one farther down that's out of focus. So you do need to flatten those and I'm gonna probably just flatten those a little bit better because again, I do have to take this tank out and mount it back in one more time. All right, I believe, hopefully that came across well on camera. Um, but the tank install went fairly well, but those straps were a pain in the ass. Uh, so just be prepared for that. The install would be easier with two people, but it can be done by yourself even when the straps are being a pain in the ass. Uh, so that's about it for the update today. Uh, hopefully I'll do a, an actual on camera here soon where I'm putting the upper control arms in and we'll see if that's a pain in the ass or not. Uh, but in the meantime, I have them, so that's good news. Uh, so thanks for tuning in, guys, and we will catch you on the next episode.